Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to look at questions 16 to 20 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2022. But I actually don't think you should watch this video, because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there, otherwise we will uh, get on with the questions now. Now indices are a very important topic for the Intermediate Maths Challenge and indeed for the Senior Maths Challenge. That's why I've put a section uh, of teaching videos on that topic in the Go for Gold in Maths Challenges uh, course. Uh, but uh, let's have a go at the question here. So uh, we've got 4 to the 2022, uh, 4 I would write as 2 squared. So we've got 2 squared to the uh, 2022 uh, and again they very often like to get the current year into the math challenges, as you probably know. Um, we've got this was the 2022 paper, so uh, we've got uh, the rules of indices here telling us that that's two to the two times 2022, which is two to the 4044. So I want to get a half of that. So if I divide that by two, uh, then I've just got two to the 4044 minus one, which is two to the 4043, and so the answer here is D. So this question is quite interesting. We can do it without needing formulae for circles, although of course uh, you know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r if you need it. Uh, but we've got these circles, they've all got radius 1, so I can just count the perimeters uh, directly here. So if I go from here to here in x, right, that's like I've got a radius here, and then I've got two more here, and two more here, and then one more here. So I've got a total of 6 centimeters across, and then I'll have the same uh, along uh, the bottom part here, right? So it's going to be two lots of six centimeters, and then I've got a half circle here and a half circle here. So the perimeter of this one is 12 centimeters, and let's just say plus uh, one circle. Of course, if you want to, you could say it's 12 centimeters and two pi r, so it's 12 plus uh, two pi, uh, but no need to really, um, as you'll see when we look at the second one, because here, right? Okay, I've got the same sort of picture. Um, if I go along one of the sides here, that's like two radii, a radius here and a radius here, so I get uh, four centimeters uh, along this side, and then I've got four centimeters down here, and four centimeters down here as well, so I've got three lots of four centimeters, which gives me 12 centimeters, and now if you think about these uh, sort of corner pieces, as you put them together, together they're going to make a full circle, if you imagine like walking this way and then you rotate around uh, and then you, then you walk this way, and then you rotate around, and then you walk this way, and then you rotate around, and you walk this way, you're starting, you'll be facing the same direction as you started with, so it must be that the total of those three is exactly uh, one full circle, so each of them is a third of a circle, and so again, I get one uh, circle, or again, 12 plus uh, 2 pi if you'd like to write it like that, but overall, we have definitely seen that the answer to this question is C, X and Y are the same length. Now I'll do this question with a sort of more proper algebraic method in a second, but I do think a lot of people will just do a trial and error uh, kind of method for this question because it's a little bit tricky to write down the algebra here, right? We've got to work out on which of these uh, amounts, if I add the percentage profit as the same, right? So like 36% uh, added to 36 pounds, in which one of those do I get uh, 56 pounds, right? Now, uh, so let's think, well, I've got uh, some easier and harder numbers here, and it's actually you know quite appealing to start with forty pounds or fifty pounds, right? So you might just work out fifty, you know, fifty percent of fifty pounds is twenty-five pounds, so that would have to be seventy-five pounds. It's clearly not that. We go a bit further down the list, and you might just sort of roughly try working them out. You know, if I do forty-five pounds, uh, you know, ten percent of that is uh, four pounds fifty. Uh, four lots of that uh, is eighteen, and then I need another uh, half of that, so that would give me. Uh, 2050 and it would get me to you know 55 uh, sorry um, to uh, 65 uh, pounds 50 there and it's taken us uh, over and you know you might be able to just do this roughly by estimating perhaps you probably uh, I've been skirting around it so I can do some examples perhaps but 
you can do 40 pounds and then work out 10% of that is four pounds, 40% is 16 pounds. And so you can quite easily get that that's the answer just by a bit of numerical work there. Um, if you did want to write it down uh, with a proper algebraic method, and um, we could do, we could say uh, something like this, we could say x multiplied by uh, 100 plus x uh, divided by 100 has to be equal to 56, right? So this is saying if the percentage profit is uh, x, then uh, I will multiply by a scale factor of 100 plus x over 100. And uh, then if I multiply this out, I get 100x plus x squared multiplying both sides by 100 at the same time is equal to 5,600. That gives me a quadratic equation, x squared plus 100x minus 5,600 equals zero. But it's not uh, totally easy to solve uh, this here, and you can uh, factorize this, and you get uh, x minus 40x plus 140 equals zero. So that gives us either x equals 40 or minus 140. And OK, uh, obviously only 40 is the, sen is the only sensible answer here, and uh, not minus 140. So you can do it algebraically, but I think this algebra is just so much harder that um, I would, uh, in a math challenge, much prefer just to do a bit of numerical calculation, working out a few percentages and using the answers to get uh, the solution there. And that is something you're meant to do in the math challenges, right? It's not about uh, getting fully worked solutions and beautifully written out answers. It's sometimes about being a little bit scrappy and doing the question in as quick a way as you as, as quick a way as you can to give yourself time to think about these harder questions. There's not a lot of time in the math challenge. You need to not spend too long in each question if you want to get a really, really high score. Arcs and sectors come up fairly often in different ways in the intermediate math challenge. That's why I've made a section on that in the course Go for Gold in Math Challenges ages 13 to 16. And I'm going to do this question in a super slick uh, way. So the arc length, right, uh, L here, which is 10, um, but I'm just going to write down the formula first. That's theta over 360 times 2 pi r, right, where r is the radius and theta is whatever this angle here is that we don't know. Um, and the area of the sector, let's call it a, that's theta over 360 times the area of the circle, uh, pi r squared, right, for a, uh, a sector for an arc length, it's just the proportion of the overall circumference. For the sector area, it's just the proportion of the overall area of the circle. Now notice, you see, to go from arc length to sector area, I just have to multiply by a factor of r and divide by a factor of 2, and then uh, that takes us from 2 pi r to pi r squared. So given I've got the arc length here, 10, right, I can just multiply it by r over 2. So 10 times 6 over 2, that's 10 times 3, and that gives us uh, 30 uh, units squared here. And so the answer is a. And I think that's a really fast way uh, of doing uh, this question. And of course, you can do it in a slightly more long-winded long way here, where you maybe um, work out the angle theta here by using uh, the fact that you know the radius and the arc length, right? I could, I could solve this, uh, you know, I could put 10 equals theta over 360 times uh, 2 pi r here, and uh, 2 times pi times 6, right? And okay, I've got some quite nice factors here, because uh, I've got 6 and 360, so the numbers will work out okay. Uh, but uh, way better here to uh, apply my super fast uh, method, I think. The way you approach this question might depend on how obvious you think it is that the answer is not E here, that the largest possible range depends on the integers chosen. In math challenges, this is very rarely the correct answer, although it can be sometimes. And I think when I looked at this question, I was confident that that wasn't the answer to begin with. So I'm going to do this question first by giving an example, and then we will also show for sure why the answer is not E. And in a real maths challenge, uh, you know, you might use a mixture of these sorts of methods. But let's just pick a value for the median, right? Let's say I took the median to be 22. I've, turned, I've chosen this number so that, that the arithmetic is reasonably easy, but you could take anything here, right? Um, and then, uh, so this is the median. I've got five uh, numbers to fill in here, right? So if the mode is bigger than the median, uh, then the mode is going to have to be both of these numbers because um, there's got to be uh, two of them. So they're both going to be 24. And then I'm going to have two other numbers here, uh, a and b, and the mean is going to be two less than the uh, the median, so the mean has to be 20 here. Okay, so uh, the total of uh, five values is uh, of the five values is five times the mean, uh, so the total here has to be 100. So I've got to have that a plus b is equal to 100 minus the sum of these. Now these add 
to uh, 70, so I must have a plus b is 30. Now if I want to make the largest possible range I can here, uh, I need to uh, make, I want to make b as big as possible and a as small as possible. If a is as small as it can be, I'll get the largest possible um, uh, possible range, um, but I can't make b any bigger than 21 because otherwise uh, we are going to be messing up with messing up the median and uh, the mode uh, that we've got. I've had two 22s, you know, uh, 24 isn't just going to be the mode anymore, and I want to, uh, uh, to and I can't make it any bigger than that, otherwise 22 won't be in the median. Right, so we'll make b uh, 21, and that means that a would be 9, and so I've got a range here of 24 minus 9, which is 15. So at this point, the answer is definitely either it's always 15 is the largest possible, or it could depend on the instance chosen. So uh, if you're not sure whether it might be E, uh, we can just sort of copy what we've done here and call this one the median, and then the mode would have to be uh, M plus 2, and it would still have to be two of them here, and I'm still going to have my A and B here. And now this time, uh, I suppose I could simplify the algebra actually, perhaps couldn't I, if I said instead of this being the median, I made it M plus 2, right, because then these would be m plus 4 and m plus 4, and then uh, the mean here would then be m, and the median would be m plus 2. So the total of these, because the mean is m, is 5 times m, right, so I'd have uh, a plus b plus the sum of these three, which is 3m plus 10, that would be equal to this total of 5m, so I'd have a plus b equals uh, 2m uh, mi minus uh, 10 here, and I want to make this uh, again uh, to make this as to make a as big as possible. So to make a as small as possible, I make b as big as possible. So again, I'm going to choose that to be m plus 1 here. So I've got a plus m plus 1 is 2m minus 10, and so that means that a is going to be here m minus 11, just subtracting m plus 1 from both sides, right? So this one is m minus 11. And then the range of values here is m plus 4 minus m minus 11. Okay, so the m's cancel, and I'm just left with 4 minus minus 11, which is 15. And we can see that that is always uh, the, uh, the the answer here for the uh, for the question, and it doesn't depend on the integers that are chosen. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.